Okay, folks, welcome back. It is time for episode number four of our barrel harmonics testing. If you missed episodes one through three, you are going to be very lost. So I would suggest you hop back to video one, start from there and get caught up. I'll have a link up in the top right hand corner. There's a link down in the description for my barrel harmonics playlist where I've got all of those and a couple other videos that you might wanna watch on this subject. So we're not gonna do a ton of review here, so go do that. All right, so now that we're all caught up, you might remember in the last video, we shot the lumps. There you are. These are the five lumps, just big hunks of metal that we were screwing onto the end of our barrel to check the effects of dead weight. The, the results were interesting. Like it seemed like there were indeed some measurable effects as we screwed weight onto the barrel. Well, today I wanna to return to our, our normal muzzle device lineup. Back in the first video, we shot through a bunch of muzzle devices on my 6.5 Creedmoor Today, I wanna to shoot back through them again on my 6.5 Grendel. Now, we shot the lumps on the Grendel in the last video. Here's what that target looked like. That first group on the left was the naked barrel. The next five were the lumps from lightest lump to heaviest lump. And then the last video on the end was with our Silencer Co. Omega Suppressor. So looking at that target, it looks like with this Grendel, there wasn't a great deal of, of group size variation between the different lumps, except for, you know, that first group with nothing on the barrel. That's kind of the way this gun has shot from our very first tests with it. When you don't have anything on the barrel, it is wild. Like it can really shoot some really big groups, but it doesn't seem like it needs much to calm it down. Now, the problem with this though, is this really wasn't a very good shoot and load, right? Even our good groups were around an inch. So not the most impressive groups, but I think it's still good enough for the purposes of this test, but we'll just have to keep that in mind today. You know, a one inch group is pretty good here with this load. And speaking of the load, we are shooting the 135 grain Burger Classic Hunter. The very first time we shot this bullet in the Grendel, it was amazing. It shot fantastic groups. And we've kind of been chasing that ever since. All of the subsequent tests we've done with the bullet have been a little bit disappointing. And this batch that I loaded up is no different. You might notice this is an empty box. This was the last of the bullets I had. So we're a little bit short on ammunition for the Grendel. I didn't have quite enough to do everything I wanted for today's video, but hopefully it's enough. The primers are CCI 450s and the powder is 28 grains of Alliant Power Pro Varmint. And put that all together at a 2.260 inch overall length and that makes today's load. So from heaviest to lightest, first is this guy, this is the Crink. You might remember that this guy shot a terrible group in the 6.5 Creedmoor. Next heaviest is the Precision Armament M11, pretty big dude. Then we're gonna shoot the Herald's Precision Tuner Break, and we're gonna shoot this guy in two different positions with the, with the tuner weights. Yep, these things that spin back and forth and move the uh, move the weight so you can tune them. The Herald shot really well in the Creedmoor. And next is a Silencer Co. Flash Hider. This actually shot the very best group in video one with our Creedmoor. So I wanna try it here in the Grendel. The next one is a change. I'm going to go with the Silencer Co. Brake. It's just kind of a simple three port brake. And due to my ammunition restrictions, you know, I've only, I only had 50 rounds to shoot today. I had to remove the Michelic brake. These two were so darn similar that I decided to remove one and it happened to be the Michelic. We did shoot the Silencer Co. brake in the Creedmoor in video two and it wasn't terribly impressive in that gun. Next is the Precision Armament M4-72, the one with these crazy swept back ports. Extremely loud brake. So that guy is going to get tested. Next is the ProComp 762 and the VG6 Gamma 65. VG6 Gamma 65 has been a bit of a surprise. It's been a really good shoot and break on the Thompson Center Compass and it's actually the lightest one we're testing. So we'll see how it does in the Grendel. And last up is the Limb Saver, X-Ring Barrel Deresonator. This is the small size. Now we're only gonna shoot this in one position today because you know with the AR-15, there's not a whole lot of room to move it before you get to my 15 inch hand guard that I've got on my Grendel. So there's really only, only room to have it right at the muzzle and then maybe like a half or three quarter of adjustment. So we're just gonna shoot it right out by the, uh, right out by the muzzle. So that's it, that's the lineup for today. Nine different devices. We're gonna shoot two groups with the Heralds. That makes 10 groups. So I've already shot these. I've got the footage edited down to about five minutes of range time. So I'll send you guys out for that and then we'll come back and talk about it. All right, folks, time to get started. This is my 6.5 Grendel. It has an 18 inch Faxon match series heavy fluted barrel. Our target is 100 yards. The dots are one inch. 
shooting off a bipod and a rear bag. I do have a board strapped across the front of my bench so I can really load up my bipod. That is a GG and G bipod, by the way. All right, enough yapping. Let's get started. We're starting off with our heaviest device, the Krink style or Krinkov style brake. It shot pretty bad on the Creedmoor. Let's see how it does on the Grendel. All right, so that's a surprise. I hate that those last two shots opened it up, but that is, uh, that is not bad. Not a bad start at all. All right, time to move on. This is the Precision Armament M11A2. All right, nice group with the M11A2. This is another one that the Creedmoor really didn't care for. Okay, moving right along, this is the tuner brake from Harrell's Precision. I've got the tuning weights all the way forward, which is the zero setting on this guy. The scale goes from zero to 150. Right now we're on zero. Okay, next is the same device with the weights all the way back to the rear on the 150 setting. Okay, next is the Silencer Co. Flash Hider. So what we're seeing is almost totally opposite of what we saw with the 6.5 Creedmoor Thompson Center Compass. Like that Silencer Crow Flash Hider was the best group, best group with that gun. And it looks like it's by far the worst so far with this gun. So moving right along, next is the Silencer Co. Brake. Okay, next is the Precision Armament M4-72. Next is the Procomp 762. Okay, that's an interesting group. Next up is the VG6 Gamma 6.5. This has probably been our best, most consistent performer in the Thompson Center Compass 6.5 Creedmoor. So let's see what happens here. Okay, last up here is the Limb Saver Barrel Deresonator. Okay, pretty interesting stuff. Let's get back to the bench. 
Okay, so keeping with the theme of this video series, today's results were not at all predictable. Let's have a look at this target. Those first three shots with the crank absolutely blew my mind, right? They were all going through the same hole and then the last two spread it open. But after the crank shot so poorly in the Creedmoor, like let's go, let's go back to that target. Yeah, right in the middle on the top row, the crank shot a 2.356 inch group and it was just kind of spraying them all over the place. And that was a better shooting load than we were shooting today, right? Our good groups with that gun were 0 0.7, 0 0.8 inches. And the crank managed to shoot a 2.356 incher. So at that point, I really started thinking that the crank might just not be capable. Because if we tear this guy apart again, hopefully you remember back to video number one, where we had this guy apart. It's got this cone-shaped thingy that goes down in there. It's almost like a single chamber suppressor. The threads on this dude are a little bit, a eh, little bit loosey. And like, uh, yeah, there you go. When you almost get it tight, like look at that guy. You tighten it down and then it lines up here with uh, that guy, if I can get it tight enough. So I guess, you know, once it's tight, there's no slop, but I thought still when you were firing that that, that cone may not be totally stable. I, I don't know. I, I was just trying to come up with some sort of reason after we had shot such a crappy group in the last video. And then today it does pretty darn well for itself. So, so you know, yet again in this series, expectations and predictions are generally just flat wrong. So our next group was the very best. The M11A2 shot a 0.594 inch group. That's really good shooting. I think that's as good as we've seen with this load in quite a while. And once again, the Creedmoor hated this break. So next up with the Heralds, the first group wasn't too bad. Actually, both groups were kind of halfway decent, I guess. It makes me think that the Heralds, the Heralds break in this gun are probably going to get along. And whenever I do, I'm going to be doing a separate video on the Heralds Precision Tuner Break. And this is a gun I'm going to use in that video. Now, before I make that video, I want to find a load that is maybe a little bit more capable than the load we shot in this video, but the Heralds is still very fascinating to me. I, I look forward to playing around with it some more. I feel like we've only barely scratched the surface with that guy. So the next two devices were the silencer code devices, the flash hider and the brake, and those were our two biggest groups of the day. And like I mentioned, the silencer code flash hider shot the best group with the Creedmoor. Ridiculous. After those, the M4-72 shot a pretty good one, a .985 incher. That was our our third best group. The Procomp 7.62 was kind of double grouping on us there. That was an interesting group. I'm not sure what to think about it. Kind of the same thing with the next two, the Gamma 6.5 and the Limb Saver Barrel Deresonator. Both of those guys had four that went into a pretty decent group and a flyer that screwed everything up. So overall, today's target just adds to the overall confusion that this series has become. I mean, it's just a dumpster fire. And I think this is going to be the last video. So this is, this is the end of this series. I'm going to have follow-up videos on the Herald's Precision Tuner Break. That guy is going to have its own video. And I'm also going to do separate videos for the Limb Saver Barrel Deresonator. I'm extremely impressed with these so far. So as far as I'm concerned, everybody ought to own one of these. Maybe even if you don't plan to shoot it all the time. If you've got a gun that just isn't shooting quite as well as you feel like it should, why not grab one of these for 10 bucks so that you can, you know, slap it on, move it around a little bit, see if things improve. And maybe that'll give you some clue as to whether a different muzzle device might be better or if your gun needs, you know, in general, just needs some tuning. This seems like something that everybody should have in their bag of tricks, even if you don't want to use it all the time. I kind of find this hilarious. A lot of people seem to hate these things. They think they're goofy. If we've learned anything so far, they're far from useless. They certainly work. They certainly have an effect, but I think people just don't like the way they look for some reason, which is hilarious because in the archery world, we stick this crap on everything. Next time you're in your gun store, look over at the archery section at all the new bows, everything comes with a bunch of limb saver devices or something similar on the limbs, on the string, on the stabilizer. They're all over the place. So there's so much crossover between the archery world and the gun world. I don't understand how they can be so accepted in archery, yet thought of as a joke by a lot of people in the gun world. I'm surprised there aren't companies that are integrating this sort of crap into muzzle devices. Like, I don't know, replaceable rubber bits, like a ring around a muzzle brake where a rubber sort of thing goes on there. Or, you know, like some 
rubbery vibration reducing crap. I, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised to see that one day. Now one thing's for certain, I will never look at muzzle devices the same way. As much as we might have failed at characterizing exactly what's going on and exactly what you need to do to improve your the way your gun shoots, you know, we, we failed miserably at that. At least we got some data that really has to make you respect the effect that a muzzle device can have on the accuracy of a gun. I'm never going to call a gun a crappy shooter again until I've tried several muzzle devices on it. You know, if you remember the beginning of this, it all came back to my suppressor and the fact that it seems to be universally helpful. Like you screw this on any gun and it shoots better groups. That's what prompted this series was a couple years of shooting this guy. It just became something we couldn't ignore anymore, right? Every time we screwed this on, the groups seemed to shrink. So what makes this you know, a, a universal improvement for anything we screw it on, but the muzzle devices we tested, the Creedmoor liked certain devices and the Grendel liked others. I don't know. So as we walk away from this series, the one thing, the one thing I regret not testing are the flat base bullets. I think we mentioned in video two, where we were talking about the gas effects of muzzle brakes and stuff. And we were wondering whether flat base bullets might be less susceptible to the differences. And we're leaving that question unanswered for the time being. I might try and roll that in to the, uh, to the testing of the heralds. We'll try and shoot some flat base bullets with that guy. See if there's anything we can learn. This kind of feels like that gif of uh, Grandpa Simpson where he walks in the door and hangs up his hat and then walks in a circle and then picks up his hat and walks out the door again. That kind of feels like what we're doing here. I learned enough to know that this is some shark infested waters right here. Like we dipped our toe in the water, found out it was an extremely strong acid and now we're running away screaming like little girls. That's kind of how I feel. It's it's not a satisfying feeling not knowing what the hell's going on here. But at this point with the, with the equipment I have on hand and the motivation that I have, I can't really think of additional tests I want to do. And I don't want to keep repeating the tests we've already done. I feel like we've, they haven't been perfect. There's some bad data sprinkled in here. No doubt about that. But I think we've at least learned that weight makes a difference. And you know, dead weight on a barrel has a damping effect, perhaps. My best guess would be that it, you know, reduces the amplitude of the harmonics. But on the gas side of things, everything's still pretty much a mystery. And I've just run out of ideas. So I think that's about it. Have I rambled long enough? I feel like I've rambled long enough. I'm going to put this testing to the side for just a little bit. I've got some reloading I want to do. Like this has kind of bogged us down here for a couple weeks. And I want to get back to a few reloading videos before we tackle the Heralds and the Limb Saver or Limb Savers. We actually have two Limb Savers. Got the big version as well that we're going to test. But probably a couple weeks maybe. Enough time to do some 224 Valkyrie. I've got some stuff I want to do in 224 Valkyrie. I want to do some 308 videos. So, so maybe after a little time spent reloading, by the time I come back to these videos, I'll, I'll be a little more motivated, perhaps. So if you're watching this in the future, when I would have already made those videos, you'll find those in the Barrel Harmonics playlist as well that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I'll leave a link to it here on the screen. I'll have a link down in the description. And speaking of that, maybe my regular viewers don't even know. I, I keep everything pretty well organized into playlists on my channel. So it's all by caliber cartridge. So if you're just looking for 6.5 Creedmoor videos or just 308 videos, I've got playlists for all of those different things. It's really the best way to navigate my channel. So that's about it, folks. I appreciate you joining me on this journey. The muzzle devices I had borrowed, I'm hoping to have them back in the mail on the way to their owners tomorrow. I really appreciate you guys learning those. Thanks to Dave for making all of our lumps. I think that was a really great part of this test. Like that, that made this, it made it a whole lot more interesting having these, I think. And as confused as we are leaving this subject, I think we, we would be even worse off if we didn't have the lumps. So thanks very much to Dave. And that's about it, folks. I will see y'all next time.